Okay, let's talk about type of skewness. Okay, so you can have symmetrical skewness. Okay, you can have positively skewed and you can have negatively skewed. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So how do I know if the graph that I'm plotting, the histogram, okay, is symmetrical? So this is talking about the histogram, okay? So our histogram, if we are going to look for this term, is it symmetrical or not? It needs to fit this condition. The first condition is the mean should equal to the median. Okay, and the second condition is they all should equals to the mode. So you see here, this is called symmetrical. Symmetrical mean if I cut this from the middle and fold it, okay, so if I fold this guy and fold this guy, they should overlap each other, okay, on exactly. Or you can say that if the height here is the highest, okay, say if this is 70, Okay, and let's say this is 65, then this also must be 65. And if this is, say, 42, this also must be 42. Okay, and if this is 22, this is also 22. Let's say if this is 10, this is also 10, right? So that's the definition of being symmetrical. Okay, all right. Now, another method of checking it is you can use the quartiles, okay? Or you can say that I'm using the quadrant here, the width here, this width okay q2 minus q1 should equal to the width here q3 minus q2 see so this blue line here that i'm drawing should be equal to the green line okay so the width should be equals okay so then this is how you can check the symmetrical okay let's say i want to check positively skewed okay positively skewed mean the mode is the least in values okay followed by the median the middle guy so this is the median right so the middle value maybe somewhere here then the mean is the greatest so i'm looking at the mean somewhere here this could be the mean the value somewhere here could be the value of your mean mean is the average okay so mean is the highest okay so this is using the data of mean okay mode median and mean but what if we want to use the quartiles value yeah you can do that what you can do is, again, we do the same thing. We say that this time, the width here, this width, okay, which is this value, should be less than this width here, right? So Q3 minus Q2 should be greater than Q2 minus Q1, okay? Then we can use the term positively skewed. Okay, let's see next. Now, how about negatively skewed? So using the same equation here, just flip this sign here. See, I flipped it and I get the mode is on the right-hand side, maybe somewhere here. Then followed by the median. So the median could be somewhere here, right? Then followed by the mean. The mean could be here, somewhere here. Okay, all right. How about if we use the quartiles here? Yeah, you can use. Just flip the sign here. This sign here, again, we flip. To this so we are saying that this width of this guy which is here should be greater than this width here see so this we can call it as negatively skewed okay all right moving on so here you see that we can find all the positively skewed negatively skewed and symmetrical and get the value out what do i mean by the value okay if it's positively skewed here then the skew factor should be positive see we can calculate the skew factor on the bottom okay if it is symmetrical skew factor is zero if it is negatively skewed then skew factor will be negative see this is the skew factor what i do is i just take the mean minus the median okay and times it by three then divided by sd okay you can call it this way that s f skew factor is three times the mean minus the median which is q2 divided by s d okay all right moving on so let's say you have a data given to you here okay this data is given to you in terms of stem and leaf showing the scores of the student okay after a test 
So you can see the frequency given to you here. Okay, the question say write down the model class. So you can look at the data. By looking at the data, you can see that the model class would be somewhere here, right? So about 68. Then find all the quartiles. So let's say we are looking at the model first. So the model here is 68, as I told you. Then we are looking at the quartiles. Now my question is, what do we do with the quartile? We write the CF out. So this is the CF, total data is 50, right? So just take 0 0.25 times 50, you get the 13 position. Take 0 0.5 times 51, you get 25.5 position. The third quartiles, you take 0 0.75 times it with 50, you get 38th position. So counting the position, you will get all the cues. Let's say I got all the Q. My Q1 here is on the 13 position, right? We rounded it. On the 13 position, you can count, which is 46. There you go. This is Q1. Let's see Q2. Q2 is on the 25th point five, which means I have to look at the 25th position and 26th position. So this is the 25th and this is the 26th, right? So 59 plus 61 divided by 2. I get 60 for this. This is my Q2. Then Q3, Q3 is 0 0.75 times 50 on the 38th position, which is 69. Okay, I got all my Qs. Now, next question is calculate mean and ST. So mean is easy. They gave me the sum already. I know total data set or sum of the frequency is 50. So put 50 here, right? Divided 2,873 divided by 50 you get 57.46. This is your mean. Okay, once we got the mean, we can now find SD easily. SD, the equation, we have sum of x squared. So we write the sum of x squared divided by n, which is 50, minus with the mean square. So this is the variance. Once you take the square root out, you will get SD. Okay, so SD is 15.7. All right, why are we looking at this? Because we are going to look for the skewness of this. So the skewness, three times the mean minus the median divided by SD. So I'm getting zero point, negative 0 0.486. Your data is negatively skewed. So you don't have to plot all the graph out, but you can conclude by calculating the values. Okay. All right. So another method is you can go with this. Okay. This is another method. We can just take Q3 minus Q2, we found out we got 9. And then we do Q2 minus Q1, we found out we got 14. Is it true that it's negatively skewed? Yes, because this side is less than this side. That's why we called it negatively skewed. Okay, all right. So you can also use this method that whether the mean is less than the median and less than the mode. Yes, we also check it this way. This is another method of checking it. See, so method one was using this and this is method two using that, right? So we are, we are just verifying what we found or what we have calculated. All right, so let's see here. When you wanna compare the data set, okay, we are considering the location of the data, right? The data set mean, my physics class in section B, section C and section D, I wanna compare them. So I would need all these data so that I can compare the location of the minimum, maximum, Q1, Q2, and Q3. All right, then I should also, if I wanna compare the data set, I should also consider the spread of the data, which is calculated from the variance or the standard deviation. Okay, then the last one is the skewness. I should know that is the data of the first class positively skewed, negatively skewed, or not skewed, you can say symmetrical. Okay, all right, here's the concept. The range, the first concept is the range, give you a rough idea of how spread out the data is, okay? But the range is also affected by the extreme value, the max or the min, right? So it is used with a small data group together with either the mean or the median, okay? So the first concept here. Now, second concept is IQR is not ex 
or effective, okay? So in IQR, we say if you look at IQR, the extreme value did not affect it, okay? Because we're just looking at the middle 50 data sets, okay? So IQR is often used with the median when the data are skewed. The last concept is here. The mean and the SD are good, okay, to use when the data are symmetrical and the data size are not too small. Okay, so if it's too small, then we just say that the mean and SD didn't help you that much.